On this episode of Star Trek Universe, Effie and I discuss Star Trek 106, The Man Trap, right after these words from our mystery sponsors. Welcome into Star Trek Universe, the podcast that started as two lifelong friends discussing Star Trek and has now expanded to include this. A Trek veteran discussing old Star Trek with a young green ensign experiencing Star Trek for the very first time. I am that old, old Trek vet, David C. Robertson, and this is the young green ensign, Effie Opelders. I figured this much. I was I was hoping that was referring to me, because otherwise I, I would have been, you know, kicked off the show and replaced. Mm-hmm. No, there's so an I'm infant now. <laughs> <laughs> The only, the only other greenhorn to, to find around here who hasn't seen Star Trek yet, an infant, clearly, mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure it would make for great radio. That's, if, if there's one thing you know about kids, and, and especially infants, it's, it's yeah. their radio voices. That's right. It's like, Scream so- into the mic. They have great handling of like the positioning and everything. It's, it's truly a marvel. Smooth. They grow dulc- up with technology these days, so. Smooth, dulcet tones, you know. It's, uh- Indeed, indeed. I won't do my best impression of a of an infant crying. It's so like I think we're all grateful for goo that. Goo goo, gaga. Now that sounds very soothing. Mm-hmm. I'm I'm very yeah. I'm okay with that. And I then, think we've peaked. <laughs> pass me that rally, you <laughs> son of a bitch. <laughs> Anywho, we had an episode. <laughs> we if we watched a thing. I think. We did. We did. So, The Man Trap. This was the um, the first one they ever aired. Yeah, the introduction. Mm-hmm. And it's it's nice, in hindsight, that they were already, like, building some stuff and some cast members out to be more included. And that gives a better starting point, I think, at the time to get into the swing of things more quickly and at the same time it's not the best we've seen yet it's it's just it was kind of there and there were some yeah i had fun with it but it was also trying to go for an emotional note by the end that didn't quite hit for me where i'm like okay this is yes this is supposed to be very hard for um the darn it what's the doctor's name i am mccoy yeah thank you very much christ mccoy's he is having to shoot a woman he loved and that's that's a thing that should hit slightly harder than it did Mm-hmm. I guess, but but you do see what they're going for, if that makes sense. It is very much like, oh yeah, this is this is a hard thing to do, and it, um, and they wrote him into that corner for a reason, and that and that's good shit. Yeah, even if execution wise, you're still kind of so stuck in the tiny <laughs> black and white TV era where you know you have to make sure people can tell what's happening mostly. <laughs> <laughs> uh huh. So. If you don't know what Effie's talking about, synopsis, per memory alpha, a mysterious creature stalks the Enterprise murdering crew members. And this is the episode where the salt vampire... Ma- that, can- that's a lot more helpful, yeah, because yeah, I'm, I'm, this, this is the shortest synopsis I we've know, had off there. Um, it's not very helpful. It's not. And <laughs> but it is, kind of, because it's like... This is the one where they the shape shifting, or maybe I guess it's yeah. like maybe a telepathic vampire that can like make you make make itself look like you want it to see it. Um, yeah, there's there's sort of both where it is like okay, so the, the creature is both copying things they see and also things other people want to see. Mm-hmm. It's it, it's not entirely consistent. It's just like oh right, it it wants salt and affection. So for the affection part, it's like. Let's let's pick someone you care about. You yeah. like your dead wife who I murdered and you know sucked the salt out of it. Uh, but I, I I the the environmentalist link was interesting at least. Yeah. The, the last of its species angle that that gave it a, a bit of a twist where I'm like, yeah, some some morning scientist would probably be willing to go, yeah, but you're just doing what you're supposed to do and like sort of, which which is in and of itself kind of uh talking down to this creature as you're like yeah you're you're an animal we're i'm gonna pre- let you be my wife but also let's uh I'm, I'm just letting you live for the sake of i guess survival of your species and it's it's there's there's something 
interesting. But at, at the same time, it's at in in uh, the, in the sixties, I guess. It's it's also not weird to go and uh, speak out in in favor of rights, even animal rights, as. Well, the white guy uh, specifically in a position to be like, no, 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 but I now think you should be protected. And mm -hmm. there's there's a parallel there, I feel. There's something <laughs> of that, like, yeah, yeah, you're protecting me and, like, giving me the rights from top down. There's something there where I'm like, yeah, no, it makes sense that that was progressive for its era. Yeah, I actually, there's part of me that I really like the, the angle that they tried to approach it with. With like, oh, it's the last of his kind. I mean, clearly there is that element where like the, he's a scientist and he's trying to preserve the last of his kind. But also, luckily, the last of his kind can make himself look like his wife. Yeah, that's very useful. That's fair. And uh, it's like, I love that line that Kirk has. This thing becomes wife, lover, best friend, wise man, fool, idol, slave. It isn't a bad life to have everyone in the universe at your beck and call. And you win all the arguments. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. What really bothers me about this and always has is like they, they lament. It's like, ah, oh, the buffalo. Thinking about the buffalo. You yeah. guys have stun settings. Save yeah. it, stun it, drag it somewhere, beam it somewhere, <laughs> keep it, put it on a reserve or clone yeah, it. Yeah, you, you really have to buy into the it's too dangerous to let wander around because it will talk its way out of the cage. Like, I'm not sure, but mm, just generally I'm like, yeah, okay, but why are we conserving the last of a species when that is literally a soul being... That cannot reproduce in any fucking shape, way, or form. Like, that's, yeah. I'm not sure if those extra, like, 10, 20 years would have mattered much for the species. Well, also, I don't know uh, that it's against any kind of, like, ethics, you know, that the Federation has to just clone it. Like, mm. of course, I don't know how well that would work. If you clone the same creature and it's basically having sex with itself, I don't know what happens to those children. Yeah, yeah. I'm, if I, if that might even... that might not be great for the gene for the gene pool and everything. That, yeah. that might have some 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 inbreeding issues there. Yeah. Um, I feel like I recently had another <laughs> context in which I I had to discuss the 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 possibility of of, of like immaculate conception and and um, the possibility of procreating with oneself or. That came up in conversation recently, and I also had to be like, mm, yeah, I feel like it. even if it happened ever throughout time, I'm I'm fairly sure that kid wouldn't make it. That would just be a dead fetus very quickly. But, um, yeah, we're very off topic. Cloning ethics are, are a different podcast, I'm sure. Yeah. Um, I hope it's out there somewhere. Cloning ethics, the podcast. Oh, God. I feel like someone just, like, bought that domain. <laughs> <laughs> I am sorry, Internet. I, I should not have done that to y'all. Yeah. No, it was it was probably uh, Matthew Fox of Superhero Ethics. Like, cloning ethics! Oh, that makes sense. Bye! <laughs> Another one! <laughs> <laughs> that makes sense. It's 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 now the, the sibling podcast to Superhero Ethics. That makes sense. Mm-hmm. Um, Yes, yeah, so I don't know what they could do for the for the lowly salt vampire, but uh, <laughs> whatever, man. I, just, I I don't like this episode very much. If I'm being honest, fair. Like I like fair. things I get in it a lot. I like I like a yeah. lot of things that are in it. There are uh, elements where I'm like, yes, and there's just the overall eh, that is that is very much in there. Because it feels like one of those episodes where it just enters with a, a premise and it just sort of keeps going, 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 but not until the Buffalo thing, there is a direction. But before that, it seems sort of disconnected. Like, okay, you figure out the salt thing fairly quickly, but it it's just sort of aimless in places. And there's a bunch of character stuff with, with the Enterprise crew where it's actually... Like oh yeah yeah, yeah. I, this is why we enjoy watching more of these people every every time. Mm -hmm. um, but the the creature of the week thing is just not always a, a uniquely terribly strong concept. Yeah, 
like the stuff that I really like about this episode is all of the character stuff. Yeah. Um, I always laugh when like Kirk picks up those like pieces of dead grass and was like, oh, it's customary to give flowers. Like those are not flowers. <laughs> Come yeah, on, I was Kirk. like, that's that's barely straw. <laughs> and he just like laughs and tosses it on the ground. Like, you're a dick. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> that was that was that was not nice. But fun. But fun. Uh but you know, I love the all of the um of Kirk kind of ribbon McCoy. You know, plum. Plum. Oh. <laughs> yes. Um And yeah, and I'm I'm very glad that Ura and Sulu get like more and more, they're quickly becoming mainstays. I'm very happy for that. And I'm like, oh yes, there's there's a bunch of names and faces I'm just remembering. <laughs> one of the things outside of the ones that only show up to die. Like, yeah. yeah, one of the things I really like is that with Sulu, they were they had him in uh, a science officer suit in the in the second pilot, and before he ever even had a name. Mm. And he was like, I think they said he was, he was in the he was in biology or something, and uh, sure. they have continued that through with him having this greenhouse. Like he's into the yeah. Now the there's an actual stuff. yeah, actual herbology something or other that is probably important theoretically and. But but yeah, they're building on that and having a guy with a sock on his hand play a plant. That is <laughs> that is that is the thing you you show up for, right? Yeah. Uh, apparently, uh, Grace Lee Whitney said that this was the be- this was her favorite scene to shoot, mm. <laughs> and that it was a very lighthearted shoot. And uh, sure, they started there. Were, there were several lewd jokes about the hand <laughs> plant. <laughs> Of course, of course. That yeah, go figure. And the puppeteer acted like he was trying to grab her skirt with the with the plant hand, and she was of like, "Of course, no. yeah, yeah, yeah." Um, Don't grow up my tits. Yeah, no, that wouldn't have made it onto the air. <laughs> Bad Beauregard. Bad. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure there's a parody out there. Yeah. <sighs> oh, I doubt it. I don't know. <laughs> Not a bat. Not a fan. I, I mean, you, we all know Rule Thirty Four of the Internet. There's, there's something out there. Uh, they get too, they, they're too uh, caught up with all the other bullshit of Star Trek to worry about that one plant hand episode. <laughs> I mean, probably, but it, it feels like a niche. Like if you have Memory Alpha and every niche is in there, like you, you they're nerds. Some yeah. nerd must have thought of this, right? And oh. and had oh. some drawing skills or something. I'm, I'm sure saying, it happened. I'm not saying someone didn't jerk off to the idea. At some <laughs> oh, point. that certainly, certainly, I'm that's a lower saying. bar. That that happened decades ago. I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I really like this line from Uhura. Uh, sometimes I think if I hear that word frequency once more, I'll cry. So that poor woman. Most of everything she said on this show was hailing frequencies open. <laughs> and I yeah, love yeah. that, like, is early on that she, we get more of her character here. Like, where she's telling Spock, you know, tell me how your planet Vulcan looks on a lazy evening when the moon is full. You know, why don't you tell me yeah. I'm an attractive young woman? And she, she is very clearly cl- flirting with Spock. And I know this is the, this yeah. is where they kind of came up with that concept of Uhura and Spock in the uh, Kelvin timeline in the J.J. Abrams movies. Oh, I completely forgot that about the movies. <laughs> the, the two I've seen, but apparently I completely forgot everything about her yeah. character in that. So, yeah. She was <laughs> Zoe Saldana in those movies. and uh, Oh, right! Yeah, I know Zoe. It's just, yeah, no, I, I just do not remember a fucking thing about those movies. It's been a while. Yeah. It's been a while. This is also, like, not the first time. This is not the only time that she flirts with Spock in the original series, but... There are even deleted scenes that are that are pretty racy for the time, but Ooh. Um, yeah, yeah, I love that. Um, I it is a fun dynamic to set up because it immediately, like, especially this being the the premiere, it's it's it immediately sets up Spock and who he is, and like, there's there's a clear like just the the there's no moon on on Vulcan. That's that's just 
yeah, you know it's coming, mm-hmm. but it's just a good line. It is. It is. Um, I, I like this, and I'm not sure how you feel about it, but I love that they're already setting up how diverse everything is. And there's, mm-hmm. um, like, Uhura says, message captain, starbase on Corinth 4 requests explanation of our delay here. Base Commander Dominguez says we have supplies he urgently needs. And Kirk says, tell Jose he'll get his chili peppers when we get there. <laughs> tell him they're prime Mexican reds. I handpicked them myself, but he won't die if he goes a few more days without them. I've, that I have, was just a weird joke, but it was fun. <laughs> I, I, I know I've had people, you know, I've heard people say, like, is a racist thing in the original series. And I'm like, I don't think it is. I think it's the exact opposite because one, we have a base commander named Jose Dominguez indicating that there is equality yeah. across, you know, but yeah, he gets to be commander. There's no, no case of, of, uh, you know, Mexicans being stuck in the lower, lower decks. Yeah. For lack of a better. Yeah. But if he wants, if he celebrates his culture and he wants his chili peppers, I mean, someone's got to bring yeah, it to I him. I mean, <laughs> exactly. No, but of, and he didn't I, say I mean, it in of a course, way. it's a very no. Exactly. It's the joke is clearly. Oh, the supplies he urgently needs are well, fucking chili peppers. That's the, the joke. Is the 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 oh, you need some ingredients. Yeah, but that's the weird thing. The joke is not ah, this 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 Mexican base commander presumably is is. Low. He he only eats chili peppers. That's that's looking a little deep yeah. in there. I it mean, doesn't. I, I get that. Yeah. It doesn't feel like Kirk is at all punching down on the fact that he's Mexican. <laughs> no, it's it's not like un- unless prime Mexican reds mean something very different than I'm aware of. But I'm I <laughs> I doubt it. Yeah. I, I mean, I no. I've I've always liked that line just because it's like they are they are. It's like they're recognizing. Damn it! We don't have anyone Hispanic on on the crew that we ha- that's <laughs> yeah. visible. We have like a Japanese guy, you know. We have a black lady. We have all these people. Scottish guy. Yeah, we don't have anyone Hispanic or Mexican or anything like anything that. Anything so. Latino, yeah. And that's that's and that's fair. But also, it immediately built out the world to like, oh yeah, of course, there's plenty of other bases and ships and everything out there, mm-hmm. and there's just a bunch going on outside of the thing every week. It's if if they can't leave, yeah, they're late for other shit, and that's that just fits. Hmm. Yep. I I like it. Um. Here's a stupid line that. Shatner actually, because I want to like point out when Shatner does a really good job with something, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and I think he's early episodes he does a pretty great job. Uh, stupid line, but I liked his delivery of it. It's a mystery, and I don't like mysteries that give me a belly ache. And I've got a beauty right now. <laughs> Hate the line, yeah, but I actually liked his delivery of it. <laughs> yeah, I get that because I, I, I don't remember hating the line, but hearing like reading it back, hearing it from you, that is. That's not a great line. No. And somehow it didn't bother me in the moment where I was like, ah, you know, he made it, he made it work. Yeah, I get that. <laughs> Barely, but, but, but somehow it's, yeah. <laughs> the way you said it's, that. It, yeah. Like, are you we're like, this is, this is not great. This is, this is not how any, any human being talks, but okay. <laughs> uh, guess he, guess he figured out how to deliver that line because I, I had, forgotten that moment (laughs) are you you're aware that shatner did uh, a lot of spoken word music very dramatic spoken word music i had not heard before but that that oh now now i'm very tempted to do a slam poetry version of that line (laughs) yeah uh, yeah check out his album transformed band it is it is trans okay man but um, yeah, it's something he's known for taking popular songs and doing, uh, or at the time, popular songs like he did, Mister Hey Mister Tambourine yeah, yeah. Man, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, on uh, there was a, an, an episode of Futurama where he's doing. They're basically imprisoned on a planet with a gaseous cloud, who's a huge Star Trek fan, and he makes <laughs> he makes Shatner do Good a concept, uh, a, a spoken word rendition, and he's like, "I'm Slim Shady." The real <laughs> Slim Shady. 
you know, oh, that's very good. Someone that's goes, very good. How do you turn a rap into a spoken word song? And the the alien is just crying and going, "He found a way." <laughs> and that's what it reminded me of when you were like, "He he found a way to make that line work." Oh yeah, no, that makes sense. Mm. Um, oh, that's that's solid. I need to watch more Futurama. It's been a while. Yeah, uh, maybe once I've seen enough of this to actually get references to, to yeah. Jack, that might be yeah, yeah. might be beneficial. <laughs> you know, I liked this line. You could learn something from Mister Spock, Doctor. Stop thinking with your glands. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was lovely. That was that was a better line. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so worst part of the episode for me was the creepy crewmen who are like watching Yeoman Rand and goes, "How about that? How'd you like to have her as your own personal Yeoman?" Yeah, I don't rem- like. What was that for? Did that serve any purpose? Nope. No. Okay, that was that was just to explain to us as an audience, she's hot. That was yep. that was the only functional like. Oh, uh, yeah, I was very confused by that. Yeah. I mean, not I, not confused to the point of being like it was the sixties, and I figured this was in there, but more more confused as in like, does this at all? Is is there any pretense for us needing this scene in there? No. Okay. Oh no. Humanity evolves. Men are still shit. I I think the men have evolved. It's just that you know a step up is still like eight steps down <laughs> comparatively. It's just yeah. a relative. <laughs> Kirk and Spock are just, Kirk, like the, like the senior officers are the only ones who are allowed to evolve. Like everyone who's below their yeah. ranks is just like titties. Look at them titties. Mm. <laughs> Taste the titties. Yeah, that's that's. I presume that's the entirety of of the show, Lower Decks. Right? It's it's just your your people in the workforce. You don't get to be like higher up officers. You didn't study enough for that shit. You're you're, you're laborers. Uh, and and just lots of tit jokes. That's 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 what I figured. Yeah, it's not at all that. Dang it! It actually has substance. Oh yeah, it does. It Out, does. Outside of like titty substances and yeah, and let's not get into yeah, yeah, yeah. Like one of the I'm, main I'm, characters I'm, keeps like getting promoted and finding a way to get herself demoted again because she doesn't want the responsibility. <laughs> and there are all these sorts of like <laughs> psychological reasons like, for it. It's lovely. great. It's great. Yeah, it's great. And that's lovely. I don't yeah. think I don't remember what even one tit joke on that show, but it is fun. That is, yeah, ah, good. And and apparently there is the opportunity to to evolve and also devolve again if you don't want it. It's like mm-hmm. pressing B on a Pokemon <laughs> evolution. Um, joke for another type of nerd, I guess. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm vaguely familiar, but yeah, <laughs> I, I you're vaguely my- familiar. Yeah, I went through my phase like everyone in, in North America. I went through uh, about a month long phase sense. of playing Pokemon Go, and then I was just like, I can't do this anymore. Oh, that's fair. Yeah, no, there's there's really no reason to play Pokemon Go if you're not already invested in Pokemon. I'm yeah, yeah. It's it's there, I guess. <laughs> it's if if you enjoy walking a whole lot, then maybe it's it's useful. But I Terrible. tend to open it every couple of weeks and then forget about it again Mm -hmm. that's that's Uh, the most they're getting out of me (laughs) fair enough i i like so much of this episode as far as like the character work is concerned and like the the atmosphere they're building like there's the scene where uh kirk is talking to mccoy and says what's the matter can't you sleep try taking one of those red pills you gave me last week you'll sleep but it's like he's on the view screen. He's got a platter and he's just eating like fruit. He's like mm-hmm. enunciating things by like taking a bite and stuff. And then we yeah. see him on the bridge right just after. He's still like finishing up his food as he's like, yeah, we're going to go do this. All right. Mm, we're going to go down to the planet. Make sure that, uh, which that's also a great uh, line. Keep a tight fix on us. If we let out a yell, I want an armed party down there before the echo dies. I really that like was that great. line. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Agreed. But as he's saying it, he's eating and just like finishing up his dinner or whatever. He's like, all right, we're all right, we're about to go. Yeah. Like, he, he clearly doesn't sit down and like take a break. That is Yeah. You know. If you've if you've like even if, if if you've ever worked in a in a place with people like and you're getting trying to get stuff done, 
you're just standing and eating and talking and like finishing up your food before you do the next thing. And I, that, that like gave it a sense of, of realism to me. It felt grounded in a way that I really liked. Yeah, I get that. It's, it's unpolished in a way where it's not, not the, oh, nobody ever needs to use the bathroom or eat in this world type of thing, which, which happens a lot more on TV where it's Mm -hmm. just, yeah, you're, you're, we're we're just assuming you sleep, but that might as well be it. Yeah, but well, that's funny that you say that because there's like an ongoing joke that there are no bathrooms on the Enterprise because you never see one <laughs> until like <laughs> Deep Space Nine or something. <laughs> oh, well, I I hit the nail right where it hurts. Good, good to know. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I mean, Ukla the Mock, who is a. Uh, like a geek band who does a lot of filk and stuff. They have a whole song called uh, number one that seems to indicate it's from the perspective of commander Riker from the next generation. And it seems to indicate that the reason he grows a beard and gains weight over the course of the series is because he can't use the bathroom. He can't find a bathroom on the enterprise and he also can't (laughs) shave because he can't find a bathroom mirror. (laughs) (laughs) that is such a dumb concept i love it (laughs) yep (laughs) (laughs) oh just just the the idea of like yeah i there's no bathroom so i cannot find a mirror to shave that's that's just lovely (laughs) that just tickles me I'm sure it's great in its musical form, but just just the idea really does it for me. Yeah. Yeah. It's funny. Let's see. Uh, Uh, I don't have a lot more about the episode, honestly. Like, there is a line where Sulu says to Janice, Rand, may the great bird of the galaxy bless your planet. And the fans uh, basically started referring to uh, Roddenberry, because since he's the creator... Mm-hmm. Of Star Trek, he's the great bird of the galaxy. Ah, um, okay. They they started referring to him as that. Uh, sure, and th- uh, that's good to know the context for. But yeah, I I that felt like just world building for the sake of it. Where it's like, yeah, I guess there's some religion still in some way. But oh, definitely. Like, whatever the, it is, I I do not yet know. So yeah. We'll, uh, oh, I mean yeah. they. They took that, like, you remember the scene from the cage where Captain Pike, they, like, the Telosians make him feel, make him think he's in hell for a second? Oh, right, yeah. And they were like, it was pulled from your mind, from a myth you heard as a child. Yeah. It, by Strange New Worlds and Discovery, they've, like, really turned that into, like, Pike has a deep religious background that he's always struggling with, and is always dealing with, like, ethics and morality and stuff. Like, they, they turned that into a whole thing. Right, okay, so Catholic guilt is still a thing I cannot escape from, in, <laughs> even in my escapist fantasy world. <laughs> good to know, good to know. Most, mostly you will, mostly you will. <laughs> good. I, but Thank like, fuck. Yeah. They don't, they're, they're not like, it's not like overwrought or anything with, uh, with Pike, but it's, it's there, and it's like a part of his, his, his childhood yeah. and stuff. And it's always, always interesting to explore. Um, especially like in a place like Star Trek, where it's like very, uh, <laughs> Star Trek has made no bones about like every God you've ever worshiped was an alien trying to screw humanity. You get something <laughs> out of it, you know? Oh, that's lovely. Anyway. I'm looking forward to that. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, I think I'm, I think I'm good. I did like the something wrong, Captain. I was thinking about the Buffalo, Mr. Spock. I did like, it didn't like hit home for me or anything, but. No, it didn't, didn't, didn't like bring me to tears, but it makes sense. It sort of closed it off nicely. And, and I did enjoy that we actually got to see the true form of the creature. Uh, it didn't add much, but it was a fun, fun design, I yeah. guess. Just the, 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 the showing that the, the, the fingers with the, the, Suction the cups, vacuum yeah. spot, the suction cups on on everyone's face. That 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 those marks made sense. That uh, was cool. Yeah. Yep. I I I liked it. I liked that. It's it's creepy to see the the red modeling on the on the skin or whatever. 
of all the dead corpses. They did a good job with a lot of it. It's yeah. just not one of my favorites or anything. No, exactly. It's like I've I I I know we can do better. That's that's really all I can have against it. It's fine. Mm-hmm. There's there's nothing nothing objectionable about it necessarily. It's just kind of like oh yeah right. There's a uh, some shape shifting and some some we don't know where who we can trust where they are and like yeah that's it's it's, yeah. it's fun. It's just kind Ooh. of kind of basic. One of the one of the really nice touches on this episode. Again, considering that it's in this is sixty six, um, mm-hmm. they one like they kind of played into it with Uhura talking to Spock at, uh, initially, but I love that like the salt vampire is like telepathic or whatever and knows that she is lonely, right. and yes. also like you know comes to her as this like crewman that she was thinking of this like idealized version of a crewman. And just yeah. start speaking Swahili to her. And it was real Swahili, by the way. Oh, that's good to know. Yeah, because um, I, I I do not speak Swahili, so I, I wasn't yeah. sure. <laughs> so, like, it, it's, it's one of those things where, you know, you one of those examples where you always kind of just want to be like, Star Trek was always woke, you asshole. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. In 1966, they had people speaking Swahili on the Enterprise. Yeah. Come on. That's good. You don't, you don't, you barely get that nowadays. Yeah, no. And it was just a nice little piece of inclusion. Yeah. That I would have never even thought of when I was a kid, but like really paying attention to things now, you're like, shit, that is pretty rare. That was weird. Yeah. And, and, and actually, you know, going through the effort of, of getting someone who can actually speak it and not mm-hmm. just fucking fake it and call it Swahili because no one here knows and that, because that would be lazy and, and, Rude in many ways. Mm-hmm. So yeah, no, I'm I'm glad to to have that confirmed. I was yeah. I was hopeful. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm going to move on to feedback real quick. Uh, Matthew Fox sends us a message: the once and future mud, dear Effie, David and Effie. I am loving your coverage of Star Trek: The Original Series. I watched those episodes with my mom when I was a kid, and getting to hear Effie experience oh. it for the first time reminds me so much of my own introduction to it, and I love the insights you both offer. Effie may not be able to answer this question for a few years, but David, I'd love to hear your thoughts on seeing this version of the Mud character again after watching the Rain Wilson version of the character over the last few years. Uh, my thoughts are, they are both Harry and Mud, and I'll move along because they're both very different. And, uh... <laughs> uh I, I will say Rain Wilson's version of the character is much more indicative of the sinister nature of mud because in the original series like mud was always doing atrocious things but they kind of played it like a joke like yeah like he was just a, a jolly uh yeah yeah it's, it's, it's it has a a ho 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 type vibe that doesn't quite fit it's evil santa is what i'm going for yeah i'm, I'm just yeah yeah he was a silly that's, scallywag that's what i'm sticking with yeah, he's just, you know, whoops, human trafficking. Oh, it happens. <laughs> oh, that hairy mud, always up to something. <laughs> I can envision a, a, a theme song in, in the Looney Tunes type style of just, you know, upbeat. Tire and mud, are you strange. trafficking again? No, Captain, <laughs> of course not. <laughs> Hide, girls. Yeah, no. There's, there's a, oh, <laughs> there's something, something uh, in there that that should never be executed. No. Um, anyway, I'm, I'm, I'm glad that my my uh, very insightful commentary uh, makes them think of their own uh, experiences as a child and, and what they thought of it. Uh, <laughs> but um, no, it's 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 lovely. That's yeah. like the the listening with your mom is. is uh, of listening, Jesus, watching, watching <laughs> the yeah. show back then. That's that. That's fun. I'm glad to to you know remind people of uh, the first time you 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 saw a thing because Lord knows it's it's all new to <laughs> all new to me. Yeah, <laughs> but I'm 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 enjoying myself, and it's 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 fun that that people are getting something out of it. I mean, that's what I'm all, what also what I'm getting out of it too. To be 
clear. I'm like a yeah. salt vampire sucking your experience. You know, I'm like, yes. I was wondering where those marks came from. <laughs> remind me. Remind <laughs> me of my youth. Uh, <laughs> I will um, gladly lend you my my uh, youthful charms. It is, uh, it's an honor. <laughs> Matthew continues, lastly, on a personal note, and feel free to read this on air or just for you both as you're comfortable, but I wanted... To say, as a trans person myself, non-binary, Effie, it means so much to me to hear you on this show, sharing your perspectives and bringing new insights into the conversation. I don't know your story, and I hope I'm not making any incorrect assumptions. If so, please feel free to mock me on air. But it has just been so great to hear you on the show. Uh, and Dave, as someone who is still working to get my loved ones to use my right pronouns, thank you. Can't wait to hear more of what both of you have to say in future episodes. No. Um, well, uh, first off, Matthew, um, don't worry, I would feel free to mock you regardless. Uh, but no, no, I am, I am trans, uh, so I, I, I'm happy to hear that, that people, uh, you know, that, that this is, this is a, a space to exist in that, that people appreciate, uh, the representation. I wonder why that sort of seems to attract these fans. Mm -hmm. Uh, but yeah, no, it's, 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 I'm glad to just just be out there, and and I know that it always helps me to have uh, people just existing, and and that not being the main thing, basically. No, uh, that that everything has to center around. Not that there's not plenty of queer podcasts where I'm like, yes, please, let's talk about queer stuff for an hour. Um, but that's that's not always always what we want to talk about. <laughs> yeah. Right. So I'm, I'm I'm happy there's there's room for for other shit. <laughs> yeah, there are definitely podcasts that like where it's like, oh, all right, well, this episode deals with something queer, so we brought in our queer correspondent. You know? Oh <laughs> like, god, yeah, that's like, that's also very much an option. <laughs> we really wanted to discuss this subject because we feel it's very important, but also we're three straight white guys, and <laughs> that that's that feels like many yeah. a podcast. Yeah. Um, so we wanted to, to, to review Barbie, but also we have no women, so... Uh. <laughs> See, that's what kills me. It's like, that's your show. You're, if you're three white guys, that's your show. Talk about Barbie yeah. as three white dudes. Like, Yeah, as, just just know that if you're going to be assholes about it, you're wrong, and you'll, you're going to get backlash, so... Yeah. Yeah. I can't... Like, now, as a woman, I have criticisms of the Barbie movie. They're just not... All that huge, and you can read them on my letterbox. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm not. I'm not going into that, ther well, into that out. territory. If someone is hardcore it, into yeah. the Barbie movie, I'm. I'm. That's fine with me. I get it. It was very enjoyable. It's just also not oh, yeah. the greatest thing since sliced bread, and that's yeah. fine. No, I know people didn't who have to be. Like... It's. It's still. It's still. You know, produced by a plastics company. So, you know. I have people who are like, this is the greatest uh, feminist movie <laughs> of all time, telling me, like, I've got to watch this thing. I'm, I'm like, sure uh, it is if you are still old enough to play with Barbies. But there, there is probably at least a Feminism 102 class out there somewhere in film form. <laughs> Damn! I think I've said way too much by now. P just go read my just... my letterbox review because that was more recent, and I actually remembered more of the movie. So it's it's probably better. Oh my better. god! It's fun. It's you fun just... though. It's a fine movie. <laughs> I just like... chat on a very popular thing. I know. I know. I'm not wise. It's late at <laughs> night, people. It's not that late at You're night, like... but for me, it's very late at night. You're scorching the Barbie Earth. <laughs> <laughs> Don't make it sound worse than it was. I'm trying to forget. <laughs> uh, thank you, Matthew, for writing in. Yeah, uh, yeah, it, it unlocked some some interesting conversation. <laughs> I'm not sure why, but uh, I hope you enjoyed it. <laughs> yeah. And then, uh, yeah, yeah, God, screw screw closed off. Yeah, no, people close to you who, who don't want to you know, respect you enough to, to use the right pronouns. That, Absolutely. that sucks. And I, I feel, I feel very sorry for you in that situation. Cause I've, I've been there and it, it's, it's garbage. Yep. It's a, it takes time. And sometimes it takes, you know, people who don't suck and, and that's rough. Yeah. Um, 
I don't know. I know I, I feel bad. I'm guilty of screwing up and saying the wrong pronoun from time to time. Sure, sure. But I like um, I, I probably still screw up with, with certain people and certain pronouns. It happens on occasion. Um but there's a the, difference between, you know, knowing it, not meaning it, and right. saying sorry, moving on. That's that's fine. I, n- most people aren't intensely mad about that. It's it's different if you just don't give a shit and expressly use the wrong pronouns. That's a, that's a very different story. Yeah. Yeah. So. And there's unfortunately plenty of those people as well. I'm I'm uh, yeah, I just say that as a, uh, you know, I uh, you know, the older you get, the worse your brain works on that and the longer you know someone before the, you know, transition, the harder it is to like make sure. your brain do that. And- Exactly, and that that makes total sense, and it is always a a thing where I'm like, yeah, of course it's harder for parents who have lived their the entire lifetime of their kid using yeah. a certain name, Absolutely. using a certain pronoun. Yeah. Set that's that makes total sense. The problem is you're not the victim here. Most most parents can do with a little less, but it's so hard for me, and a little more like, but it's fucking hard for my kids, so maybe I yeah. should make an effort. Absolutely. That's the difference. Absolutely. It's just like, we all know it's hard for you. It's also not that hard. It's fine. You're, you're fine. It, it's hard it isn't, you know, but it's... Uh, it's It it's shouldn't be the, hard in a way that's to the there. detriment of, of, of the actual trans person in their right. lives. That's, the, that's the effort should be goes there off the rail. Yeah, exactly. And that doesn't mean there isn't room for, for grief uh, right. or, or any feelings that come up. But those should be expressed to, like, friends and not, like, yeah. your, your trans kid because... That's yeah. not not for I them agree. to, to yeah. be upset about, like. But yeah, that's 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 uh, that's that's the 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 trans feminism one hundred and one I have to offer on this yeah. beautiful night. And I always I always <laughs> hate when uh, you you hear these stories of the parents saying, um, "I just want to know what I did wrong." Like, oh God! Uh, yeah, you're in the middle of it. <laughs> yeah, like this. Has this to this do with you. this is what you're. Yeah, no, maybe it's just not you. Maybe not everything is either your fault or your to your credit. Like it's it's sometimes it's just some other person you happen to have raised. It's like don't worry, mom. There's plenty of other things I can blame you for. Yes, this is exactly. not one of them. <laughs> yeah, I, this this like if you want to blame yourself for something like blame yourself for the fact that it took me 20 years to like get out of this closet like that's that's an issue oh god uh, <laughs> oh anyway uh yeah so we have another episode to record so we're gonna wrap this one up i think if that's all right with you, yeah I think. yeah we'll see you next time <laughs> uh so i i gotta say live long and prosper Jolon True, and what do you say, Effie? Because we we did come up with a thing for you to say. Oh we fuck, did. fucking oh shit! I mm, I have no memory. I have no active memory of of, of anything we record. <laughs> <laughs> I, I believe your your sign off is now eat a dick. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like something I would say. <laughs> how how very unfortunate. <laughs> <laughs> well, eat a dick, guys. Eat a dick. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, before Effie and I come back, you will uh, hear me and Matt talking about Lower Decks, new episodes of Lower Decks as they are airing currently. And uh, d- this thing's bye. <laughs> bye. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for listening to the Star Trek Universe Podcast, a Stranded Panda production. If you'd like to hear more from David C. Robertson, check out the DC On Screen Podcast or maladjusted.tv for his web videos. If you'd like to hear more from Matthew Carroll, check out the Marvel Cinematic Universe Podcast or listen to his music. Just search for Matthew Carroll anywhere you get music. 